Now that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make an introduction. Good morning and welcome to Leadfoot. Let's get after it. nobody knows about. This is a 1958 Scarab. The Scarab is an all-American roadster. I, I think it is one of the most beautiful cars I've, I've seen from the era. Now Barnes and Troutman uh, built this car. Uh, this is a continuation car. This is 12 of 20 built by Scarab Motorsports LLC out of Kansas. This particular car has a 383 stroker in it producing roughly 600 horsepower. Standing here with Racing Ray Williams. What year is the car? 1970. 1970. 1970 Ford Capri Piranha. That's correct. Correct. Okay. So we, we never had these in North America. Ray, can you tell us about the car? What happened back in South Africa? They, these came out with V6s mostly. They came out with a, a 1600 four cylinder, two liter four cylinder, or a V6 three liter made in England. And what happened in South Africa when they were assembling them? There was a shortage of V6 engines, and they had a whole lot of Windsor 302 engines. Oh no, Ray! Oh no, oh, no, no! There's, there's <laughs> what a shortage of. So South Africa is being very innovative, stuck the 302 Windsor in this and called it a Piranha. And so suddenly it's a powerful hot of the car. And um, they ran them for several years. Only built about, well, there's a funny story, 200 or 400, but there's only 800 left. Um, and they won a lot of races and they became so successful that they ended up banning them because they were beating the GD40s. What compression is it running? Uh, it's running around about 12. 12 to 1? Yeah, okay, so running, wow. running aviation fuel, yep. full time. Yeah, yeah. Um, what, what, kind of, what kind of torque? Is, is this making? It's around about 500 pounds. Because you know that thing that Carol Shelby said, right? Horsepower sells cars, but torques wins races. It's a nice car to drive. It's very yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, the extra 150 horsepower hasn't made it faster. It's made it harder to drive because it's got so much power to the wheels. Yeah. And, and what transmission are you running on the car? It's still a Mustang gearbox. It's a okay. T5. Uh, T5. Oh. T5 with a, with a, it's got a close ratio um, quite Gearbox, and that oh, okay. might be an issue. I've blown third gear a couple of times since we put the horsepower up. Oh, just That's making good. a little bit too much power. Yeah, yeah. What have you done with the suspension on this car? Um, I bought it like this actually. A guy built it for Targa, spent a lot of money. Oh, on for it, Targa? So. Targa, yes, for Targa. Oh, okay. They won its last in Targa many, many, many times. But it's got coilover shock absorbers. These G was shock absorbers here with the, with the um, remote canisters. So she told me to change. Yes, bounce and um, bump and rebound. And so it's, it's pretty. <laughs> Pretty clever car, and I love it. What has been the favorite race that you've run the Piranha in? This one right here. This <laughs> this, foot. This, this is New Zealand's. This is New Zealand's. Uh, good uh, Good leg foot. I've been here five times with this car. Okay. First time we clipped the bridge with the bridge right. Um, <laughs> we're going to get in the top ten. Each time I get in the top ten shootout, yes. put the bridge and broke the front tire on. Not minor damage. Next time I spun off on 
and they call it Williams Corner now. And then the next time I spun off again, Williams Corner, and then went over over the, into the trees. But it, it loves me, this car. I missed all the trees. Went down the valley, and I was thinking of Dick Johnson at Bathurst, because he went into the trees. And I'm thinking, no. And I found gap, gap, gap. Got out of the bottom. Not a mark on the car. And I had to climb up the bank. Got onto the top, and I forgot there's 5,000 people there. This big cheer went up. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I meant, I meant to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then last year, I stayed on the island. I got some better tyres, the same as what the villains are using. And we managed to get a podium. I got a third place last year in the category. So, how, are you, how are you tracking this year? How, how is this year um, going for you? new and yucca faster guy. He's getting quicker and quicker and quicker. And the car's lighter. This is around 1,300 kilograms. So it's, it's heavy for a hill prone car. Yeah. Not to get their scores, and these are around 700 kilos. That's a big disadvantage I have here. That's my excuse number 22. I've got more power than they have, but it's about trying to get the power down onto the ground. Motorsports, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Ray, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go and hunt those young guys down. Absolutely. And, and hopefully, you get yourself on the podium. Hopefully, you do. <laughs> booth and this is the Monza SP2. It is an open cockpit car unlike anything we've seen from Ferrari in a while. They have a, a one-seater version of this which is the SP1. I think it is uh, an unreal throwback to the origins of motorsports. The only thing I think that could make this car better is if it actually had open wheels something similar to the uh, Polaris Cross or the KTM Cross. This is the Ferrari 246 Dino GT, and of all of the Ferraris here at Leadfoot, this is the one that I would have if I could fit in it. Unfortunately for me, being six foot five, I don't think one of these will ever be in the garage, but what a beautiful car. I know that is because the Testarossa had pop-up headlights and this has um, flush, flush mounts. Gated five-speed. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> 
things I do, the things I do. Trying to get my big ass up the hill.